Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 10 students who are working on the year end summative. It's question number five, which is from the linear system section. The question says, the linear system below has two solutions, one of which is x equals zero, y equals zero. Find all possible values of k. Ooh, so I have these two equations, let me label them one and two. So it's a linear system, but there's this weird k. It's a number that I don't know. It's a constant value. I just don't know what it is. So I know that there's a solution when x equals 0 and y equals 0, which sort of makes sense because 0 plus 0 equals 0. It doesn't matter what k is. Um, but we're looking to see if there's other possible values of k. So, hmm, well, we know that it's a linear system and we're talking about solutions. So we're just going to try to solve the system and see what happens. So we have choices. Um, we learn how to solve by substitution and by elimination. Now, normally I much prefer elimination, but if I tried to solve by elimination, so let's say that I just say, okay, let's solve by elimination. Oops, because that's what I normally do. Let me try again here. So if I try to solve by elimination, I'm gonna do two times the first equation because I'm gonna try to eliminate my x's. So two x plus four y equals two kx. And then the second equation, 2x plus y stays the way it is. So if I subtract, I have eliminated the x, but I haven't, because there's still an x over here that won't get eliminated. So I can't solve for, I can't eliminate x this way. And similarly, if I tried to do a, uh, eliminate y, I would have the same problem. So elimination isn't really gonna work because I just simply can't eliminate. And therefore, we're gonna use substitution. So in order to do substitution, we need to take one of these equations, I'm gonna take equation one, and I need to rearrange it so that it says either x equals or y equals. So I need to isolate one of my variables. Now, because equation one has an x over here and an x over here, I don't know if it's gonna be very easy for me to isolate x, but there's only a single y. Well, there's two y, but you know what I mean, one term with y. So I'm gonna um, isolate y so that I can do my substitution. So the first step in isolating, I'm gonna subtract x from both sides. So that gives me kx minus x, and then divide by two. So kx minus x divided by two. So I've isolated y. Now what's over here isn't that great to look at. It's kind of a bunch of weird math, but that doesn't matter. As long as the y is a single positive y on the left, I've isolated y. And so because I did it using the first equation, I'm now gonna take the second equation and I'm gonna substitute that in. So the second equation says 2x plus y equals ky, but now I don't wanna use y anymore, I wanna do a substitution. So wherever I see y, I need to substitute that bunch, bunch of math. So I'm just gonna use a big bracket because I know it's a big item. So instead of 2x plus y, I now have 2x kx minus x over two and kx minus x over two. So, oh boy. Now, again, I'm trying to solve for x. So I know there's a k in there, but if I solve for x, that's the goal of solving a system of equations. So I'm gonna solve for x and just deal with the k like a number. Um, so oof, what am I gonna do here to solve for x? Well, first of all, I have uh, a bunch of stuff here is divided by two, and I'd rather not have to worry about fractions. So I'm just gonna multiply every term by two, because that'll help me get rid of some of this visual nonsense here. So if I multiply by two, that gives me four X. Here, this term multiplied by two just canceled the denominator. So I just have the numerator of that fraction, which is KX minus X. Over here, if I multiply by two, same thing, this two cancels this two. Now, remember, this k is part of that term. Don't multiply by two a second time. That's only when you have separate terms which are distinguished by plus or minus signs. So this two cancels this two and I have k times kx minus x. So at this point, I'm not 100% sure where I'm going, but, but I'm just doing algebra until something occurs. So what do I know to do? Well, I have four x, minus x. I know what to do there. 4x minus x is 3x. Okay. Over here, I'm going to multiply k into the bracket. So I have k times kx. So that's k squared x minus kx. So, so far, that's what I have. 
Now, um, usually when we solve, we like to collect like terms. So anything that has an X, I want it on the left. Well, everything has an X. So I'm just going to move every term. So I'm going to move everything to the left. So 3X plus KX, we're already there. Minus K squared X plus KX. And now it's equal zero because I moved everything away from that side. Uh, well, I have KX plus KX. I can do that. KX plus 2KX, I guess I have 2KX equals zero. So now I'm at the point where I have to go a little deeper into my algebra tool bag um, because I want to still solve for X. That's my goal. So I see that I have three terms. There's an X, just a plain old X in each term. So I'm going to common factor that X. So that factoring tool that you used in quadratic sure is important, even if we're not in quadratics. I'm going to common factor that x, and then what that leaves me with is 3 plus 2k minus k squared. Now, look at what I have. And again, think about for a minute what we were doing in quadratics. I have two things multiplied together, x and a bracket. And the product of them is 0. And we know that that means that if either part of them equals zero, so if x equals zero, or if the bracket equals zero, then I have a valid equation. So one possibility is that x equals zero. Well, we had that from the very beginning, right? At the very beginning, the question told us that x equals zero is a possibility. But this gives me a place to look for another possible set of solutions. If this bracket equals zero, I also have a true statement. So let's continue thinking, how can I make that bracket equal zero? So if this bracket, 3 plus 2k minus x squared equals zero, I have potential solutions. And what I have now is that looks like a quadratic. It's just not written the way I like it. So I'm first going to rearrange it so it's in more like standard form. So I'm just rearranging. I'm not moving things over the equal sign. And because it equals zero, right, because it equals zero, I'm just going to multiply everything by negative one. And you're only allowed to do that if you do it to the left and the right, which is easy to do. Zero times negative one is still zero. So now I have a more friendly looking quadratic and I can solve for K using factoring. Well, I could also use the quadratic formula if I didn't feel like factoring, but it's a pretty, pretty easy quadratic to factor. Two numbers that multiply to negative three and add to negative two are negative three and positive one. So that means that k equals three is a valid answer to this expression, and k equals negative one is also, oops, negative one, a valid answer. So let's actually see what happens if, if these k's are my answer. So if k equals three, let's see, oops. So if k equals three, let's start there. So we're going to rewrite this um, system, but now we're going to use a value of k. We're going to use k equals 3. So that would give me x plus 2y equals 3x, and it would give me x 2x plus y equals 3y. And I still can't solve by elimination because of that issue with the x's here and y's here. So we're going to solve again by substitution just to see if this is valid, what's going on. So I'm going to rearrange the first equation to say 2y equals 2x, so y equals x. And then if I sub that into the second equation, I get 2x plus x equals 3x. So all I did was in the second equation, instead of y, I substituted x. So I have 3x equals 3x. Huh. Well, so x equals x. Well, is that true? Yeah, in fact, that's true for any x, any x ever, that x equals x. So does that make sense? That no matter what, if, if let me just fix this here, that as long as x equals y, this is a valid system. So let's see, hold on. So someone give me a value of x. Oh, what, x equals six, great. Now, if x equals 6, y equals 6, because if k equals 3, x equals y, so this is what we're testing, what we just did algebraically. 
So, and let, let's just randomly pick up the value of x equals 6, so y equals 6. So, are these true equations if x equals 6 and y equals 6? So, if x is 6, this is 6 plus 12 equals 18. That's true. What about down here? This is 12 plus 6 equals 18. Oh, so if x equals 6 and y equals 6, this is a true statement. So, what if we tested another one just to make sure our math holds up? What's that? Negative 7, okay, I don't know who said that, but whatever. So, if x is negative 7, y is negative 7, and let's go back up here. So, I have negative 7 plus negative 14, and this would be negative 21. That's a valid equation. Same thing down here. This would be negative 14 plus negative 7, negative 21. So, if k equals 3, um, we'll always get a solution where x equals y. So, there's a lot of solutions here if k equals 3. Um, let's test the other one. What happens if k equals 1? Sorry. What happens if k equals negative 1? So again, I'm going to set up my equation. This time using k equals negative 1. So those are my equations. And again, I still can't solve by elimination. So again, I'm going to take the first equation and rearrange it so that I've isolated y. So here's the first equation. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And then I can divide both sides by 2 to simplify. So I get y equals negative x. So let's see what happens when we take that and sub that value of y. So y is negative x and sub it into the second equation. So the second equation says 2x plus x equals negative y. Sorry, 2x plus y equals negative y. And here's the value of y we just found. So 2x minus x is x. And then that's x. So I have a statement that says x equals x, which is obviously true no matter what. Um, so that's sort of a irrelevant solution. So, but it does mean that k is allowed to be negative 1, because if k is negative 1, I get an infinite number of solutions because x is equal to x no matter what, what x I choose. Um, so we get solutions like 6 and negative 6, because we need x to equal, we need negative x to equal y. So if I let x be 6, y is negative 6, and let's check that in the formulas. So if this is 6, this would be negative 12, and that would be negative 6. That's a valid answer. Whereas here, this would be 12, this would be minus 6, and this would be negative negative 6, which is 6, also a valid answer. So I just randomly pick x equals 6 to test to make sure that everything's looking nice. So therefore, in the end, we discovered that k equals 3 and k equals negative 1 are both going to give me valid solutions. Okay? Thanks for watching. Um, keep studying, keep asking for help when you need it, and good luck in your summatives.